Okay. Yes, All right. We're recording. <clears throat> um, Jim Wiley, I wanted to ask you a question about this whole U.S. corporation thing because I've been carrying Anna Von Wright's on my website. I don't understand it all, but I think there's a grain of truth in there someplace. And I've recently seen some noted commentators trashing the whole idea that there might be multiple corporations, a bankrupt corporation and so forth. So why don't you give us your snapshot story on, on this whole corporate thing? And then I'll come back and ask you a second question about your views on Q and the people who are trashing Q. Okay. <clears throat> Something very important happened back in the Civil War. It was 150 years ago, a little bit more. Uh, Abraham Lincoln refused the London banker money. They wanted to fund it. They wanted to fund the Civil War in order to capture the United States and make them a vassal. And of course, they succeeded in other, other methods. But Lincoln refused them. And on the London Times, in successive Sunday issues, on the op-ed, they had uh, reports that said Lincoln must die. And, and they painted him in a very bad color, very bad light. Okay, so Lincoln eventually was murdered by the London bankers and they had their own patsy there, Lee Harvey Oswald was John Wilkes Booth. But the United States did not have that money, did not make that deal. And as a result, after the Civil War in 1871, there was the United States Incorporated Corporation that was created, a very funny name. I call it US Government Corp. It's, it's a little bit simpler and rolls off the tongue more easily. And in the following two cabal sponsored world wars, the United States got into more financial trouble. And the result was that after 1871 and, and affirmed further after the world wars, the United States became um, subject to the Vatican. And this is a dirty secret that is not widely told, but this entity has been at work now for 150 years. And in March of 2020, this past year, Trump enabled, facilitated and forced its bankruptcy. And I believe that put into hyperdrive the Vatican slash cabal slash Rockefeller Institute, which includes the medical, into overdrive to bring down the Trump administration with the COVID uh, fake pandemic, with the uh, enabled mail-in votes that completely perverted. I, I knew this was gonna be perverted way back in July when they started talking about the, the new rules for the, the mail-in, absentee ballot, whatever you wanna call it. But we've got a transition, Robert, and I am of a firm opinion because I've got a couple sources. One of them is uh, an ex, oh gosh, I don't even want to get too specific about his identity, but he used to work in California and have a lot of different connections with Los Angeles folks. And uh, now he's a historian and he's been pointing me. He said, Jim, if you want to know the true path, you got to follow Anna Von Wright's and do some reading over Christmas vacation. Spend a day, spend a few hours. So I followed up as best I could, given my, my personal situation here. And what I've learned is that we've got a transition in progress that's fascinating. And, and what happened was in, in March, the bankruptcy was declared. And not only did we declare bankruptcy against our landlord, the Vatican, which is a big bank and gosh, they got a big storefront being a religious institution. And it's more like a satanic uh, ritual house. And it's really quite pathetic and, and nefarious. But Trump and the best element elements of the European military and the Interpol conducted raids. This is my understanding, raids on the Vatican. And they made off with, I first was told it was 17 plane loads. And now I'm told it was over 500, maybe 600 plane loads. And um, we're talking about a tremendous amount of gold. I mean, like multiples of Fort Knox that were seized. I call it Team Trump, but it was really the best elements of the, the European militaries and ser the serious fraud division of Interpol. And a lot of artifacts, a lot of documents, maybe even some Da Vinci artifacts and documents and, and you know, 
charters and oh gosh manuscripts and everything okay tremendous amounts of wealth was confiscated now let's get back to the the sequence it appears that the mount rushmore event on july 4th was far more significant than people realize i have seen a copy and i'm looking to see a confirmation of that it. it's called the second declaration of independence on july 4th at mount rushmore is that not an appeal for for a fifth head to be on the Mount Rushmore with Donald Trump. I just don't know if they're going to be able to manage the hair with all the sculpture. OK, so that was a transition event that put the power with FEMA. This is fascinating. FEMA has the power. They're not going to jail Trump supporters. They're more likely to jail in the FEMA camp the cabal members and their extended families, because now you've got the states they are subsumed under the power of the FEMA system. Now, the FEMA system is coordinated with, coordinated with the US military, Robert. This is fascinating. So we got a transition from the US government corporation, if you will, to military rule under FEMA. And I want them to start off by arresting Whitmer in Michigan and Newsom in California. Start with that. Next. We've got the US military that has all the goods, they've got all the data, as you pointed out. Their job now is to move forward, to prove the, the, the election fraud, to identify the traitors, to clean house, start with the middle level people and work your way up and conclude with Nancy Pelosi and Biden. It, you know, bring in Harris too. I don't, I'm not sure who the heck she is. I, I hear a lot of different stories, not even sure of her gender. Anyway, we've got a transition in progress. Uh, key dates were February and March for, for dissolving the US government corporation and, and, and really eliminating the, the tax revenue. All the tax revenue went straight to the Vatican. I personally had something that, that was involved with the IRS, personally. And they were removing a few hundred dollars a month. Well, it stopped in February. And I thought, whoa, this is somewhat a confirmation that the IRS is now a defunct, defanged, and detoothed entity. So now we have to wait. And I, I've got kind of a, a funny interpretation, but I, I've got a lot of different, and, and you probably heard this too, that uh, by mid-March, by early March, by, by Easter, by Holy Week, we might have a resolution. Could be quicker if we're fortunate. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, don't tell me, don't tell me they're going to have a resurrection of Donald Trump on Easter. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, I'm not well, let sorry. Me, okay. Let me um, let me bring you back. Let me bring you back to the corporation matter. So, bottom line here, I want to I want to end this segment. You're saying that there is a lot of, of veracity and uh, and serious information in what von, Anna von Reitz is publishing. Very All valid, right, let's, yes. Let's, let's, let's set that aside. Thank you. Now, there are a lot of people, including David Icke, whom I respect very much, and a few others, who are completely attempting to debunk Q, saying in part there have been no arrests, which is not my understanding. What is your overall view? I, I sit with Martin Geddes, who's written definitive essays on Q as a public education program, a great awakening catalyst. What is your view, very briefly, on the matter of Q and the conversation that has gone around Q to include all of the attacks against Q by people who are otherwise very smart? I think they're wrong in in attacking the Q story and debunking the Q story and, and claiming that it's not correct and true. I think it is true. I, I cannot attest to its origin, but I believe that in the last several years, it involved the recruitment of Donald Trump. He originally didn't want it, didn't want the job. He was very fearful of, of uh, the safety of his family, but they assured him the safety. Um, I personally know somebody who's in a Twitter network and she's from Texas in the South. She's got some Washington connections and she's got a group of about 20 different people. And one of them is John Kennedy Jr. And she said, Jim Q is real. I'm, I'm in touch with some people who know Q entities. 
And I thought this is fascinating also, very, very stimulating. Okay, I believe Q is formed from a nucleus nowadays, like the last 20 years, uh, from the people, the generals who were fired by Clinton, baby Bush and Obama. They formed a nucleus. I heard it, gosh, five years ago that there was an annual kind of a jamboree, a conference in Idaho, and they called it America First. So when Trump announced America First and his mentioned America First about a dozen or more times during his inauguration, I thought he was recruited by the fired and dismissed generals and admirals. They had the 1995 incident over Alabama where, where I think seven generals and maybe one admiral was, was killed and brought down. That was a Bush event. That was to stop the impeachment of Bill Clinton for collusion. Same people for collusion with the Chinese in the Sandia labs, etc. Okay, Q is real. I can't say 100% certain, but golly, I've got a lot of different indicators that support it. And I think I think it's going to become more apparent soon. The detractors, Robert, I think what they're essentially indirectly admitting is they don't have very good sources. You know, that is that is really great. And I'm trying to get my camera turned on here. <laughs> okay, there we go. Jim, I want to conclude. I think you've done a magnificent job of answering both questions. And I want to just conclude by giving you a chance to tell people how to find you, because I consider what you produce to be very, very valuable. <clears throat> I've got some uh, validity. You know, you know how we've been saying in the last few weeks that if a topic is being censored, it's, it's, it's validated, therefore. Well, I've, I've been getting hacking attempts. And yesterday we got a, the website fixed. And it, it's very brief. But it's www.golden-jackass.com. We've got a subscribe button. There's a donate button through PayPal. There's a consult button, which is, I think, tremendously fun and stimulating. I've met some great new people and they become new sources, Robert, through the consult button. And then I've also got the sponsor button and I've got, uh, you know, I'm looking at a guy who I'm very grateful to here. And uh, you know, this is all very nice, this is very nice. So there's the website, golden-jackass.com. And it's been around for 16 and a half years, almost the 17th anniversary, going strong. But, um, you know, I still need support. I'm, I've got a lot of challenges. Well, let's stop there. And let me okay. say in no uncertain terms that I support you and I believe others should support you and pay attention to you. Jim Wiley, thank you very, very much. <laughs> okay. My pleasure.